Hello guys, and you're welcome. In today's tutorial, what we're going to do is to create some sprite sheets and set the animations using Godot. So let's quickly go over and get our sprite sheets. So I'll head over to h.io and here I'm going to search for Dancing Girl. And let's just type Dancing Girl and just search for that. And you should search for this one here, the Dancing Girl sprites. So I'll click on that and go to download now. And I'll just click on no thanks, just take me to the downloads and I'll click download Dancing Girl files. And this should be done. So what I would like to do is to go to my downloads folder. And there it is. So I'll just right click and I'll just copy that first. So I'll just cut it rather. And go to my documents folder. I have a folder called Art Packs. And I'll just right click and paste this in art packs and then I can right click and say extract all. This should extract it to the same location. And once it has done that, we can see it has opened up. So let's open up the dancing girl and I'm interested in the sprite sheets like so. So let's go over to Godot and then drag this folder called sprite sheets. So let's create a new project in Godot. So I'm clicking on the Godot icon and our project has loaded i'll just maximize this and the first thing i'll do is to create a new project so i'll go over here i'll call the project dancing girl and i'll also browse to my documents folder where i have a folder called godot projects and i'll create a new folder here i'll call the folder dancing underscore girl and click ok and click select current folder and click create and edit so the first thing like i said i'm going to do is to bring in our apps assets into our resources folder so i'll just right click on resources here and create a new folder i'll just call that art and with that art folder created i'll just minimize the size and I think this dancing girl is here, so I'll just drag in the sprite sheets folder into the art folder and open this so we can see we have the sprite sheet folder with all the sprite sheets selected. So next I'll create a 2D scene. I'll call that our main, I'll call that game. This is going to be our main game scene. I'll save that as game.tscn and I'll create a separate scene for the dancer. So what I will like to do is to use an area 2D. So I'll right click and I'll click on change type and I'll search for an area 2D. I can still leave it as an area 2D, no problem. And I'll just call this Lancer. You can call it player or whatever. Now it wants us to add a collision shape to this area 2D. So to do that, I'll just add a Collision shape 2D, it's not going to really do anything to our project. And here I'll just click on the shape and click on a new rectangle shape. And I'll just drag this a little bit, nothing too fancy here. So I'll click on the dancer again. And next I'm going to use the shortcut key control A, which is the same thing as clicking this plus button right here. And let's click create an animated sprite 2D because this will allow us to bring in a sprite sheet. We can also rename this sprite sheet. I'm going to call this uh, Dancer Sprites, like so. And for a sprite, it also wants a sprite sheet resource. So I'll click on the Dancer Sprites, click on this animation drop down, click on empty, click on new sprite frames, and click sprite frames again so that you can actually see this grid with these sprites. So I believe I can just drag this and drop it here and you can see we have our sprites but the problem is we actually haven't sliced our sprites and which is not what we want. So I'll delete this and delete this over here and here I'll click this add frames and I'll go to my art folder sprite sheets and I'll click the first one called balancing and I'll just zoom in a little bit. And we can actually see we need to, <coughs> excuse me, we need to slice this sprites. So I'll just, it says the size is 78 pixels. 
I'll just set this to, let's try eight, like so. I think eight isn't a bad value. And then here, I'll set the vertical slice to just one. So we can actually have all these eight bars. So I'll select the first one, hold shift, select the last one and add these frames. And I just like to call, give it the same name. So I'll just call this uh, balancing. So this is going to be our first sprite, like so. Hmm. And something actually happened here. I can't find my animated sprite 2D. So I think I must have deleted it by accident. Sorry about that, guys. So I'll just quickly add it again. So I'll add an animated sprite 2D. And let's add our animation, our sprite frames. And I'll just drag in, sorry, I'll just click here. Bring in balancing, click open. Set this to eight by one. Hit OK and then select all these and then click add frames. And we can just drag it and place it right here. So you can see she's kind of blurry at the moment. We can play this. I'll just set everything to eight frames so that the animation is a bit, uh, a bit smooth. And yeah, let's see what happened here. So we just called the animation balancing and yeah, it's here. So cool. So let's set uh, solve this blurry issue. So let's go to project, project settings, and under rendering, under textures, let's set this to nearest and close. Now we can see we have a sharp character here and let's save this. And let's call that our dancer.tscnc. And the idea why I created this other game scene is that we can instantiate using this chain icon. We can instantiate our dancer right here in our main game. And what we can actually do is to move our dancer anywhere. Let's set her to the center right here. And what I want to do is to increase the size of our character. So I'll just set her scale to like 4 by 4. And we'll just drag that right here. And let's just test the scene and play the scene. Let's select the current scene, which is our game scene. And now we can see we have our character, but she's not actually uh, moving. So what we can do is to click play right here. And when we save this and play our scene, we should see our character actually, okay, she's not moving in our main game scene. So let's go ahead and continue setting up our animation. So I think I can set this as autoplay on load. So that's why she is not actually playing. So let's go ahead and play this again. And we can actually see our character dancing. So we need to set the autoplay on load. So let's go to our sprite frames in case you've clicked out of that. So that's our first sprite frame. So let's create the other four. So we have one for the hips. So to create a new one, we can cl click on this and I'll call this the hips. We'll click the next one. Double click on that. I'll call that the skip. So click the next one, click a new one. And I'll call that the slide. And then let's click it again. And we have the snap. So for each of the animations, we're going to bring in the sprite frames. So for the hips, make sure you select the hips, click on this, click the hips, click open, set this to eight by one, like so, select all the frames, click add frames, change the frames to eight frames per second. And we can just play that just to test it. So let's go to skip click on our sprite frames. So we're on skip, click open. Let's set this to eight by one. Remember, we can always zoom in here. Okay, let's set this to one, I need to hit the return key. So click the first one, shift, click the last one, click add frames, change that to eight, hit the return key, go to slide, Let's quickly set this to 8, open up 
the slide. Let's open it. Set this to 851. Hit the return key. Click, shift click, add frames. Set this to 8, which we've done already. And we can test out the slide animation, which is awesome. Super awesome. And then let's go to snap. I'll set this to 8 quickly. And then we'll open up our sprite frames. Go to snap. Click open. Set this to 8 by 1. Hit the return key. Left click, hold shift click, add frames. And we just test this animation mic. So that's awesome. And again, what I'd like to add is you don't necessarily need to create a uh, an area 2D. You could just create an animated sprite 2D directly, but this just helps you when you want to add collision or things to detect this area. So that step was necessary. I just wanted to create that. So now that we've actually had our dancer, we've created our dancer, let's see how we can create a script in Godot to actually code it such that we can press a key on our keyboard to change the character dancing. So to do that, I'll just click here and I'll attach a script and I'll just click create. So now this is extending an area 2D, which is the right type of resource we created because that's an area 2D. That's totally fine. So first, what we want to do is to create a custom variable to have a reference to our animated sprite whenever this sheet, this script is ready. So to do that, we'll create the at on ready, and then we'll create a variable. We'll call that and dancer underscore sprite is going to be equal to and then we'll just click and drag this sprite right here basically we are referencing our animated sprite 2d using a custom variable called the dancer sprite and this will be available when this script is ready that's just what uh, this means we can also do the same and place this in the ready function but I think it, it will suffice here. Next, we need to create a function that will hold a reference to our key input. So I'm going to say uh, func uh, answer animation. And in this dancer animation, I want to get an input from my keyboard. And I'll use an if statement to loop through that input. So I'm just going to say if input dot get underscore key input dot is action is key pressed that please is key is underscore key pressed good so this is the one I'm looking for so if input is key pressed and I'll start with one like so so if i'm pressing the one key and this is going to be key underscore one like so it's not key one so what we are we going to do so we are going to set our dancer underscore sprite dot play and the animation we want to play is the hips. So we'll actually do an else if the input dot is underscore key underscore pressed. Let's say we're doing key two now, which is the two key on the keyboard. So we're going to set our dancer sprite dot play. And the next one we're going to play is the skip. So I'm going to use a series of else if statements. So I'll just copy this like so and cheat a little bit and just place, place this right here. So we have one for the skip. And then I believe we need another one. So we have hips, skip. And the next one is slide. And the last one is snap so that's a snap and if we're not pressing any of these so 
if we're not placing any of these, we're going to play the default animation. And that's our dancers, oops, dancer sprite, not to play, and we'll play balancing. All right, so let's save this and let's just head over to test the scene. And now she's on balancing. If I press one, two, three, four, five, she's not actually responding. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So let's go to our main game scene. We have our dancer sprite. Let's go ahead and it's not working because we actually need to call the function. So let's create our update or process function to call this uh, to call this function so that it can work on every frame. So I'm going to do a func underscore process and I'll pass in underscore delta because I'm not going to use the delta. And what I'm going to do is just call the function call the dancer animation and we should be actually good to go. So let's play this. So she's on balancing because it's the default animation. We're not pressing any key. So this is the last one. So now I'll press the one key and she's doing the hips, doing the hips, doing the hips. If I release the key, she's on balancing. Now she's doing the skip. I'm pressing the key too. Now she's doing the slide. Okay, she's not sliding because I actually have it on key two and then she's not snapping as well. So I need to change these values to key three and key four. That's why it's not good to just copy code and paste it. So let's try it again. So here I'm pressing key one, key two, key three and key four. And if you also want to debug and see if this is actually working, what you can do is just print out, let's say print, uh, let's say uh, hips, hips activated. And let's just do one more. And let's say print uh, skips dance active just like so, so we can see what's happening on the console output to test if it's actually working. So I'm just going to press one. It said hips activated, I'll press two. It said skin, skip dance active, so this is working. So uh, basically that's how you can create a, a nice uh, sprite sheet, slice them up and then swap the animations. And you can also use this to create a character and then skip those animations. So uh, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next quick tip.